a cold, wet, grisly day, drizzling, muddy dirt on the ground beneath decayed leaves left from the dead of winter. Branches crack as the wind causes the trees to sway over the low tide with lakes and streams. There have been signs of something out in the woods and in the lakes of a little northern Ontario area here. Signs of a creature that I have been looking for. It is the perfect season to find them. A creature of unique looks. Face unknown, but the excitement of the hunt and being able to meet them. Ugh. Let's see if any of the clues turn out. Ah, I believe. Okay, we're good. We're good. Hi. Hey, everyone. My face and fiends. Welcome to today's solo game today. If you can't tell from all the overlay work here, we are playing OK Cryptid. My stuff is speaking like crazy. Let me adjust that for a second. Um, we are playing OK Cryptid. It is a game. I, I hope you understand that much. <laughs> uh, this is a tabletop role-playing game um, that I personally got by supporting the solo but not alone 3 over on itch. Um, but you can also find it on its own page on itch. Um, and yeah, it's a fun little game. It utilizes tarot cards, so a little pool of d6s. Um, and romancing cryptids <laughs> uh so yeah i'm excited i'm nervous i hope i can play well uh there's a lot of interesting mechanics um a little different from the past tarot games that i have played where they just sort of use the tarot deck on its own this one utilizes a couple d6s we also have some player mechanics which i've set a bunch of this up ahead of time so I will talk a little bit of the mechanics and what the steps of the game are, um, as well as role playing out my little game. So let's maybe just follow the order of which is written here. Um, oh gosh, I hope I say their name right. I always feel so bad when I can't say someone's name correctly. Um, Taj, Taj, Taj Leon. I hope that's correct. Um, you can find their page on itch at Taj the Bard, that's T A D H G, the Bard, dot itch dot io. Um, where you can find their games as well as OK Cryptid, of course. Um, but yeah, they wrote to this game. So, going over just some of the stuff, as I mentioned uh, mechanically, what we were playing with, we got a beautiful tarot card deck. I'm using for those who are familiar with the games I played in the past, uh, I'm using my antique anatomy tarot deck uh which is made by claire goodchild i've shared this on my twitter before um and yes it is quite fun using medical anatomy so it gets a little uh creepy in it and i thought that worked very well for cryptids <laughs> um so yeah we got our tarot deck we got i got a little booklet in front of me a little notebook to write in i have three six-sided dice um it's just me i know what is safe for me and how far i go so as general content warnings go there is potential of death my cryptid could very much murder me and i may describe it in very gory fashion so there you go oh i'm being corrected on the name okay pronounced like they okay so tag Lions. Okay. Thank you so much for that correction. I always feel so bad and I really should have tried harder to fix at the start, so apologies for the mispronunciation. Um, got it now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and yeah. 
So we went over some of our tools here. Um, as I'm reading over the PDF that I got. So, of course, cryptids. You can use cryptids as your own. I've rolled up my cryptid ahead of time while also inspired by my own local legends and folklore. Um, so let me talk a little bit about that as we go. So uh, first we got, after, of course, safety consent. Remember that, especially in group play. Um, I'm solo, so I'm good. But if you are listening and you feel you have to walk away because my descriptions are too much for you, feel free to walk away. That's perfectly okay. Um, so yeah. Now the creature. Who why am I trying to romance? Well, as I said, I rolled it earlier, as we can roll some of our traits. So I'm rolling, I rolled something that has a serpent-like body, has far too many teeth, just the biggest smile of teeth ever. Maybe ro rows of it, some legends say there might be rows of teeth. Uh, they are very much drawn to fire. And their face is always obscured in some way. Um, so with those traits, and following on my own little folklore in my local area, I sort of imagine them as an even creepier uh, Ogopogo. Um, so an Ogopogo uh, is basically a lake, uh, a lake monster, a serpent lake monster. Um, there's, they also come in a couple different names, but essentially that's what that is. So our little cryptid, not so little, but they are long serpentine, almost like the cave snakes, but they have the tiny little arms and a uh, mix of like frills, scales on the body. I wish I'd put my little doodle up on screen. I last minute planning there, but they got like little beady eyes and just shaded face and all you can see is the, this weird crooked big giant smile and just teeth poking out you got your teeth and another teeth poking out and more teeth poking out it's uncomfortable it's delightful i love it um so with those traits established i also got my investigator so today i am katrina, katrina manson uh she her i should say my crypt is they them uh, I am 34 years old. Uh, my hometown or region is, uh, the Guelph area of Ontario, Canada. Um, but we are now up in Northern Ontario, kind of branching into Quebec. Um, Katrina is about five foot 10. I'm reading all the things on the character sheet here, uh, is an Aries. Um, they don't smoke, but they do definitely drink. Uh, probably my favorite thing that I wrote down here, the first thing people notice about me is how exhausted I seem. <laughs> I feel that. Three things I can't do without a notebook, my hat, and coffee. I have water with me physically. Remember to hydrate. But... Ah, good. <laughs> um, and yeah, the skills in which we use our D6s for. Uh, I have Curious at 3, Charming at 1, and Deft at 2. So that is how my character sheet is looking in the very general sense. Um, so with that, we talked our creature, we talked our investigator. Um, so now, let's talk a little bit about the game mechanics itself. So, on the board here... Uh, I have my little pile, two piles. I got my one pile with my major arcana deck, uh, which we use towards the meeting spread. It's also our prompts for our scenes, which are scene difficulty or number. Yeah, meeting threshold. There we go. The meeting threshold I set is four, which the recommendation for solo play is four to six. Um, so I got my major, and then this is the mix of the Marner arcana. Um, which I drew my cards for my uh, cryptids, uh, likes and dislikes, um, which is actually quite interesting. Um, I pulled a six of elix or elixirs, which is cups for standard tarot. Uh, let me show the cards. Ah, I love showing them off. So I rolled a six of elixirs or cups, or queen of rods or uh, wands. 
uh, six of blades or swords and six of coins or pentacles. Three sixes. <laughs> oh, tarot cards always. This deck likes to likes to really play with me. Um, so yes, we got those sorted. And I'll talk a little bit about what those mean for me and our creature, which is named Ogo, because Ogo Pogo, I call them Ogo. <laughs> um, so the cups is emotional gifts, such as heartfelt words, speeches, and other direct affirmations, our wands, um, I'll show them again, wands, creative gifts, and our swords. Shared hobbies, activities, personal pursuits. That was way off camera. And pentacles is physical gifts. So reading um, in relation to these, the higher the value of the card, the more the creature likes the gifts of the type associated to that suit. Um, so when I'm gathering, I guess my clues and gifts. Uh, let me read this aloud. Reading aloud helps me figure things out. When an investigator gathers a hand of clue cards during gameplay, let's not reiterate myself here, they represent possible gifts for the creature. A card with a lower value than the card in the same suit, and the creature's likes and dislikes will represent a gift which they will appreciate. So let's say, if, as I split it, I pulled the two of cups or elixirs for this card um well it is lower than my six elixirs in that i pulled for ogo um so this two of cards they'll appreciate i hope that's my correct understanding of it <laughs> i've got a shuffle looking because i looked at the card <laughs> so now with that our actual play space or have this little section down here for our meeting spread. Um, so as we play, some of the cards in the deck will be added to the spread of face-up cards called the meeting spread. I'm reading verbatim from the PDF here. Um, this represents how, ex how close you are to a climatic meeting with the creature. Uh, during this meeting, you will make your feelings known and those feelings will either be returned or the creature's nature will spill doom. For your investigator. Delightful. It wouldn't be the first time I died in a one-shot solo play, honestly. Um, so as we go, you'll see me place these cards up here. Um, and then let me continue reading. When you add a card to the meeting spread, place it face up. Uh, in the play space, as you add cards to the meeting spread, it should begin to look like the following diagram. Y'all can't see the diagram. Get get the game if you want to see the diagram. Um, players must decide how many cards are required to fill the meeting spread. So as I said, we're going to be uh, aiming for four. So we'll go through four scenes and that is where we will end. And then we'll get into what is called the meat creep. And that's going to be fun. I'll talk more about that later because we want to play, right? Um, so yeah, the game. Um, I'm solo, so I am both a scene lead and player here, so we don't have to worry about competitive nature of anything, but I'll be rolling on my skills for passes or successes or complications or complete and utter failures. So we'll see how much we can accomplish here. But yes, we'll be... Going through, ba 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 ba. Ah. Put that down. There we go, deck. As we get this deck ready, as we will be pulling. So, this is our investigation deck. I actually haven't had a nightmare in a very, very long time. When I learned how to lucid dream, um, whenever my dreams get close to being on that nightmare level, I'm able to subvert it. <laughs> As it says here, if you're playing a group setting, whoever had a nightmare paranormal experience goes first. Woo! Well, that card flew out. We're going with that card. 
Gun your card. All right. All right. Let's get into character here. So as I said, my name is Katrina Manson. We are up in Northern Ontario, bordering Quebec, where there's been rumors, potential sightings of a cryptid called Ogo, very serpentine uh, entity, very long, um, has apparently a good smile, <laughs> as good as one can be of its nature. Um, so let's see what this prompt is. So we rolled the High Priestess. If you can see that card. It's got a skull and there's snakes. Which oddly works very well for the cryptid that I rolled up here. So the High Priestess. Which I guess, spoilers? I should have said very much earlier than this. Spoilers in case... Uh, you want to play the game and not be spoiled on any prompts. Because I'm going to read them. <laughs> so was High Priestess. <sighs> so, trying to hunt down these rumors and sightings going through the muck of the Northern Ontario forest. There's jack pines that reach so high into the sky and they're the only things that appear green in the canopy in this break of winter to spring. Um, but there's been a feeling like a creeping spine tingling feeling of Ogo wanting something before it can really reveal where it is to really show itself. And I've been trying hard to follow the tracks. You know, the sign of a long groove in the ground or chipped off scales stuck in the underbrush. But as I camp out and very cold shivering through the night, I had a dream. It was weird. Everything just felt like I was in really thick, mucky waters. And I could sort of see the glisten of ripples, like a surface just at my eye level, as if little, two little green orbs seem to look out at me. And in a hissing, soft, but almost crackled whisper. It makes a demand of me. <sighs> Let's see, what... What should I roll? What do I want to do? What is this demand? I want to... make it happy. Um... I don't think I can be deft in a dreamscape. So a dreamscape is full of puzzles, so maybe I can roll on the curious. So through its crackled whispers and its demands of what it wants, I can't really make out the words. It's more of an impression. So I have three dices on Curious, so five, four, and one equals ten. I think 
that is a success. Yeah, success. Okay. But I do get the feeling of Ogo wanting something warm, wanting a heat source. So I wake up and in the blackness of night and hearing the cold, winds brushling in the leaves, I gather up uh, whatever dry wood that I had put aside, my matchsticks, and I go out and I start making rather large bonfire and just trying to keep it going through the night. Um, and as much as it is also keeping me warm, I almost feel this weird sense of something watching. And as I look about the shadows trying to catch glimpses of Ogo, sometimes I swear I see just this really long meter wide smile flashing against the rim of the firelight. So I think it was happy. I think we did something nice. But who doesn't like a warm fire this time of year after such cold, damp weather? Well, as I start running out of wood, dawn begins to crack that horizon and I got daylight and looking around I do see grooves and indents just in the outskirts as I hit my camera I was watching <laughs> going over footage trying to make sure my clues and uh, everything that I've gathered from rumors and people talking about Ogo <sighs> That is seen. Yes. Investigation deck is now meeting spread. The beginning of our meeting spread. There we go. And we passed our roll, so we're good to continue on. Sweet. I think I understand the gameplay. Let's go. So I have to keep in mind that since I rolled curious, I can't roll it again for this next scene. Can't roll the same stat twice in a row. So hopefully this won't be anything too bad, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, we roll or pulled the world. This is fun. We got a torso all opened up in the middle there and skulls of different animals kind of around the motif of it. So the world. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we have time. Lots of time on our hands. It's very much like I 
hunting. Yeah, very much like hunting. And I have tried every season to come out and look for Ogo. And this has been going on for, well, it may have been 22, so almost 12 years now trying to get sights on Ogo. It's just a very small time frame of which they are most active and it's been a slow progress of trying to get their attention to get the correct clues because so many times I follow something that someone has said oh yeah this is connected to the Ogo and only to find out that it was just a little snake trail or uh, the discarded skin of a snake or uh, teeth that belong to a fox or a coyote or a wolf or a bear. The Ogo's teeth are very distinct. They're almost like m the most needle-like thing you can find. Um, And man, is it exhausting to come out year after year. Granted, I see hunters do this, and I do meet hunters out on the trail year after year. Um, in fact, some of them do want to hunt down the Ogo, but of course I would never let them get close enough for that. Why would I? I, I will take them for their information, but I won't give any of mine, of course. There's got to be something that could get me closer. Mm. Let's see, maybe, maybe this might be a good card to roll. Roll charming, though I only have one dice for this one. Um, yeah, maybe with all the years of trying to find Ogo season after season, trying to pull those rumors and what other folk have seen way out here. I will try to roll a charm. Yeah. I rolled the one. Apparently feeling adds, now that we can get back to the character sheet of the kiss me, kill me, adds a point on kill me. Ooh. Well, I suppose my endeavor of trying for so hard for so long makes Things a little awkward. But there will be points where I think I'm so close to the trail of Ogo, and then maybe I got too close when it didn't want me to, and then it's wide. You just feel. Just that nattering of teeth, just clash for a moment on the breeze. Ooh. I'm not gonna give up on spotting Ogo, no way. I've been going at it for so long. So tiring, so exhausting, so exhausting. But I will get to see Ogo. This will be the year. This will be the year I get to see Ogo. <sighs> so I 
just move my camping spot, try and get away from the usual hunting spots as best possible. And maybe tomorrow. Got a card drawn. Oh. Yeah, fool. So, fool, fool, fool. There we go. Oh, so I learned. That there was a fact that I thought was true about Ogo is actually false. Oh, oh my dear Ogo. Well, I've seen you drawn to my fire before. I've known you to have a snake-like body and way, way too many teeth. But maybe your face wasn't always as obscured as everyone believes it to be. I think... I think I remember when the first stories came out about Ogo. Some really old newspaper clippings that I came across in the library only had descriptions of just the snake-like body, but not really anything about what their head is like. Or any deeper descriptors, almost making it seem like wake waves in the lake. But finding out that they had more of a face, and we could always see their teeth. It's always really glinting in any light. And I think I found out that it wasn't necessarily just obscured in a paranormal way into foreverness, but it's just. They're in the woods, and it's dark, and the thicket is thick. Of course, everything's going to be obscured. Now that I think about it, it's quite a silly thing to say that it's always obscured. Of course, it's always going to be obscured. So why don't we actually know what the face looks like if we shine enough light? And maybe since it's so drawn to fire, that's how we get to see its full, unsettling delightful face. So. How did I come across this information? Well. I'm going to roll a deft trait. Because... I feel like making fires might be useful. <laughs> so I'm making lots of fires trying to not only draw Bogo to it, but it'll give enough light to maybe reveal a bit of the face. <sighs> I rolled an 11! 5, 4, 2. So with our deft trait, we get a clue, which is this pile. Ooh. Three of blades, or swords, for the standard Hitero deck users. So, I got that for a potential gift. Yeah, I have a gift in my hand. And, since we rolled an above ten, not only did I very successfully make these fires, 
and not only did I truly see the face of Ogo, which I cannot even describe it, in the most eldritch beauty that it is. <laughs> you get a bonus. And going back on what we can do here. Okay, we'll keep our bonus. We'll keep our bonus. We need, may need that bonus for a roll. All right. So with my deft hand and thinking, I create one night just fires, not just a bonfire, but lots of different little fires, lighting up lanterns, whatever I can without the possibility of setting the forest on fire. But it is wet, very wet, coming out of a Canadian winter. Um, and though the wind is very cold with that breath of winter in it, everything around the fire escape is nice and kind of cozy. Um, and I do feel that bit of heart skip a beat when I hear the cracking of twig and branch as though something big is moving around. I catch that little glint of something shiny just two little orbs with that backing of green like any predatory animal has. And as I take note of the long, long, long body and is it now two meter long smile? It seems to get bigger every time I get a look at it. Oh, well, but there is their face. And all those stories and rumors of it being obscured, I know for sure are wrong. Now that trade has changed. Okay. I'm gonna shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle. Checking in on you, Chad. It looks like my bot got aggressive. My bot does that sometimes. Apologies. It never, never wants to be nice, the bots. And I keep forgetting to try and mess with it to change it. <laughs> I just want to double check to make sure I am still doing this all good. New game to me. <laughs> all within the scene. Hmm. I guess I've been keeping my goals pretty simple to the prompt, haven't I? This recent one being, I want to see the creature's face. Because rumors say one thing, but I know it isn't true and I'm gonna find it. But now, even though I feel like in a season's past, I may have creeped it out with me being too aggressive with my hunting. Um, we got to see it. We, we've been... It's been enjoying the fires, which is great. So. I'm sitting in our little campsite. We will... Where are we at? Four already. Okay. Ooh. <gasps> Wheel of Fortune. Ooh, this card looks so cool. I love this card. All the hands and then each of the suits around it. This is a delightful card to pull. Alright. 
Wait until I read the prompt. Probably will not, may not, who knows. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. There it is. <gasps> Ooh, okay. So, it's getting towards the end of this muckiest part of season. Now, for anyone who is Canadian, or even maybe northern states as well, but especially those in Ontario. <sighs> the season of which we know as spring <laughs> starts like a damn cold winter with a couple days of summer-like weather with a damn cold winter again with maybe some very, very wet spring and then will eventually lead to a proper summer. <laughs> But it is incredibly wet. It can be very, very cold for a while. Uh, if we're lucky, it may not snow, but sometimes we'll snow again in April and May. Um, but from my understanding, as I am uh, out here camping, trying to catch sight of Ogo, trying to appease it so that it may have a healthy attention of me. Is that even possible? Well, at least have its attention. Um, I know that this is the time of year where it seeks the warmth of the sun before it dissipates into the lakes to avoid the summer heat. Because it can get quite hot in Ontario and incredibly humid. Um, so, as we're getting close to that time where it is going to submerge itself in the lakes, or themselves in the lake. I'm going to learn something about them. And I'm curious what it will be. This will do a curious roll. I think that will be good. So what I'm going to try and do, because I'm catching signs of its scales coming off. And it seems after all the seasons, I am noticing that it just gets a little bigger every time that I see it. So much like snakes. It sheds, uh, which is why there have been rumors about it, um, uh, of people pulling up snakeskin thinking it's the Ogos when it's not, but I have collected true samples of the Ogo. Uh, But this year's a little different. They go through something much more intense. And I catch it. I catch. I'm gonna try and catch seeing it. So, what I'm gonna do with my curious, curious mind is I'm going to try. I'm going to try. What am I going to try? I am gathering information. So I'm going to try and gather up some physical clues, such as it's shedding skin, maybe any, if it might be shedding teeth as well, if it has like teeth like a shark or something, in terms of its rows, maybe that's why it has too many teeth. Um, any other hints of change in its uh, footprint patterns? Or I guess snake body patterns we'll figure it out I'll throw it on my portable board of strings and photos and stuff we'll figure this out yeah <gasps> ooh ooh okay hold on let me just think for a second what did it roll last time diff 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 it was deaf, so yeah, curious. Did I roll three dice last time by accident? I think I did. My mistake. I'm just gonna retroactively... Okay. Okay, it's fine. I still rolled within that threshold of that pass. <laughs> but this time, I rolled two fives and a three. So, that is a very good success with stuff, so I'm gonna say definitely 
get a clue, which I picked. A Knight of Rods. Very nice. Put that in the clue pile. And if it's making a change, I'm going to roll on a table as we have a couple tables back at the creature creation that we can roll on. So let us see what trait. I'm going to say maybe a physical trait. Yeah. All right. I need water. Remember to hydrate everybody. Ooh, okay, I rolled a 45 on physical traits. So after hours, a couple days maybe, of watching, waiting between my camp and that sort of hunter's blind that I made to try and track down Ogo, I do catch like bits of mushroom or fungi in the trails that Ogo has left behind. Till eventually I do see during one of the nights I have fires that just sort of coming off its gills that they almost look like the elephant mushrooms or something. Just like really frilly but very much fungal in nature. And they almost pulse a bit. Sucking in all the moisture and warmth around it. <laughs> oh man. What an interesting sight, actually, when you think about it. This serpent body. Did its mouth grow to three meters now? Maybe. Make it out to that. And now it's gills having more of a mushroom fungi shape and sort of the ribbing and frills and tendrils coming off it. Even its fins seem to have more of that mushroomy texture. Maybe it hides like a log when it's hibernating. Oh, oh what an interesting fact. I hope it's true. I shouldn't say it's a fact if I don't know if it's true, but I hope it's true. And then it'll be fact. Alright. Well. My meeting threshold has been met. For I said four. And we have four. Now let's talk a bit more about mechanics once more. So. Ba 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 ba. This means <laughs> we get to the meat creep, I believe. How exciting. We get to properly meet Oko. We've been catching glimpses of them for years. Their delightful snake-like body and their delightful, ever-growing, teethy smile. Now we can know what their face looks like, though it's very eldritch in nature, and they have at least two, maybe more, more than that. Oh, uh, but. Ah, uh, let us, let us see. Okay. Meat creep, meat creep. I just realized my bot was like, Creep, you're bullying. No, but we're not bullying with creep. We're not. <laughs> so, let me read what meat creep is all about. We still got to look at kiss me, kill me as well. But here we go. Meat creep. As I have concluded my investigation, uh, we are coming face to face with the ogo. This is a big scene. Uh... And our, it's simple, we gotta try and fill four kisses or four kill me points, and we already have one kill me point because I failed one of my rolls. Um, and that was just a really bad time. Uh, 
So. I. <laughs> I. Go along this old boardwalk that was put up. And it goes across this kind of murky part. Um, kind of like marsh in nature. Just coming off of the lake. But there's this sort of boardwalk that creeps out. And it's overgrown. It's slippery. It's mucky. And with me I have a lantern with fire. As I know, Ogo loves fire. Is completely drawn to it. And I think this is... This is the spot, based on all the tracking I've done, the evidence I've been following through on. I think if I come across this boardwalk, we'll be able to finally meet Ogo. I believe it knows our intentions. It has come to our campsites a few times now. Um, and I'm going to wait on the dock. My lantern burning as brightly as, I, as it can as the sun is just beginning to set into that dusk with that sort of burnt sienna orange in the sky and just the very early signs of true spring fading out into the darkness as birds settle in and the crickets begin their songs before silence falls, and only the cracking of trees as they bend in the wind come up. <sighs> oh. I'm pretty sure Ogo's mouth is big enough to swallow me in one bite now. And it would be like going through a shredder. So. Drawing from our clue deck. The number on the card, they draw will set the difficulty for their next action this scene. So I drew the three of coins, pentacles for the traditional tarot. This one's fun. It also has a lot of little snakies. This is why I figured this deck would be perfect. <laughs> so we are a thir three Three challenge, if I keep it that way. I could draw another card to make it even more difficult. Once a player has drawn a card to set the difficulty, they must roll using the dice from one of their three traits and attempt to roll equal to or over the value of the card. Successful roll adds a point to your kiss me score. Okay. So this will be easier than I thought it might. So first and foremost, coming out here, finding the spot in the scene, I would have had to done some very intense investigation to find the clues that lead me to this dock, to this meeting space that I think the Ogo will be. So I'm going to roll on Curious first. Wait, scratch that. I used Curious recently. We'll go with Deft. I, I'm following the rules. Can't roll the same thing twice in a row. Going with deft. So beyond my investigations, it is, since this is sort of an abandoned dock, there's a lot of fallen tree, overgrown brush. As I said, it's incredibly slippery. So just getting to the meeting point is going to take some uh, skill to try not accidentally fall into the waters, which are still quite cold, even in a later mid-spring in Ontario is very, very cold. So we gotta beat a three, which could be very possible. Deft, I have two dice. Okay, I rolled a three and a two for a five. So with that, back to mechanics. I add a plus one to the roll total for each. Okay, so we get a plus run to my next roll, and I got a kiss me. Yay! So I clamor over the fallen trees and logs, and I push back any loose uh, rock or dirt or mud that's just kind of 
being in the way that could be an obstacle or problem for me just to make a pathway. And I find a clear enough spot to set up. I dry off the deck a little bit and I put my lantern, as I said, at making as bright as I can, sort of setting up. And it takes some physical labor to get uh, a good spot for me to sit and wait without being uh, freezing and getting hypothermia. Um, I do get that. So next... Ooh, I do have gifts. Let me use a gift. Let's see. So for gifts, let's use my blades, my three of blades, because the creature for their gift card is a six of blades. So if I six of blades. So now we have. Since my gift has a lower value on the card than the card from the same suit of the creature's likes and dislikes, the gift is accepted and a point added to the Kiss Me score. So, following this, the swords represent shared hobbies, activities, and personal pursuits. What is a shared thing me and Ogo have? I mean, the obvious one is warmth and being around fire, um, but that's way too obvious. Um, it may sound weird, but I do, I kick off my boots, roll up my pants, my pant legs, pull off my socks, and I dip sitting on the edge of the dock, I dip my feet into the cold, cold, mucky waters. And I just feel like that thick uh, ick of it, all the um, sediment, the mud that's just underneath the surface, um, the dead plant matter uh, that's kind of just floating within the little bits of ice breaks that are still sort of on the surface of the water. And I just, like, feel it in between my toes, that mud, just getting right in there and sinking in. As I know, Ogo loves to also just be sinking and completely entrenched in the muck and mud of the waters. So I want to show that I also love a good mud bath great for the skin. That's probably why Ogo has fantastic scales. So that is a gift. And that is another kiss me. Yes. Alright. Haha. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, my other gift is way too, <laughs> too high for it. Um. So, let us try our next skill then. So we did death, so next would be charming. I'm not a very charming person. If you haven't realized, my thought process is kind of all over the place as Katrina. Um, though, there's always, there's a, we got a, a very decent chance. I think like a 50% chance on a single die. Um, oh, with a pluses, I got pluses as well. So, yeah, <gasps> I maxed it! Six! Yay! So that would be a seven with the plus. But it, it already over doubles. Um, so I can just see in the very faintness of dark, just in the rim of that bright burning light from my little lantern fire, just the after my feet sink into the lake. And I can feel it. I can feel the motion, but I also see on the surface of the water that glistening wake of wave just moving. And some would 
think it was just the movement of in past we hear otters sometimes being mistaken as they like to swim in rows but this I know this I know it is Ogo for I can see they're now more fungi like fin rise up a little bit in the water slow to take a breath of air before sinking back in so another plus to our kiss me oh, we're almost full on the kiss me I am so excited oh, I can feel it the cold air is definitely cold but my face is hot <laughs> And I can hear just heartbeat in my ears. I'm going to get the absolute possible closest look at Ogo ever. Oh my gosh. Okay, we, we're rolling on Curious. We, we're going to get this no matter what, I think, because I have three days for Curious. Yeah. Yes. Six, six, one. That is a 13. <laughs> So as I hear my heart really pounding in the stillness of night, I just see the wide, toothy maw of Ogo start to come up underneath the water in front of me. And yeah, it's definitely the size. It, it's about my height and size now, just width-wise. Whew, daunting. And I just see the little green orbs of eyes shifting up, kind of like an alligator's underneath the water. Those fungi frills coming up. And with its little invisible in the dark snoot, it nudges my legs. It's big enough to nudge both legs. I do feel just the little prin, pin pricks of its teeth. Just the, all the ones that are sticking out and jaggedly all over the place like a pin cushion almost. Just overlapped and sticking out. And I lean down towards the waters, putting a hand out. And I place my hand onto its head. Oh, it is unbelievably slimy and cool to the touch. And yet also, very quickly, it seems to just pull the heat out of me. Ah. Oh. I just give it more, like a little rub, and see its eyes, his eyes, they're just blink a little bit. Before its body makes a big splash behind it, sending water and mud and muck up in a wave. And as it crashes, into the plepid dock. I just sit there. Hat gone. It was unfortunate. I love that hat. Uh, and I got to touch Ogo. It let me touch them. And they didn't bite me. They definitely could have taken my legs. <laughs> So, an epilogue. Well. You know what would be fun with how big Ogo is? And since no one would be able to see us on the dark of the lake anyway. Heck, 
why not ever ending story this and Ogo just lets me climb on the back of it just in behind its head and it is very cold intensely cold I can't be out there very long but we start just snaking serpentining through the lake waters and sometimes Ogo will pop up and I just hear the hissing scratching of its maw opening up as it goes to chomp down on something it saw and it just seems to just swallow it single bite whole whatever it was could have been a sleeping bird or an otter or a beaver I don't know and I'm not gonna worry about it not gonna think about it and just have that fragrance of muck and fungi as I ride on the back of Ogo and give it the best hug a tiny human on a giant serpent can. <laughs> and I think that is my play. That is my game. Yay! All right, well, very, very interesting. Yes, in chat. Yay, happily ever after. Yay, we got a happy, cute ending for a cryptid story. Delightful. I kind of, I almost wish I failed because I love getting to gruesome descriptions. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm decent. Katrina can only be so. I, I need to, I, I'm, I will on Twitter post uh, my doodles. I, I did doodle Katrina and uh, Ogo prior. I'll post them on Twitter. Um, but Katrina just looks like a very tired, angry person. <laughs> so I think she'd probably make more notes of things going wrong than things going right. Um, but yeah, ooh, this was fun. I can actually really see um, in a group play this getting like really, really fun as well as really, really silly. Um, yeah, this was considering my first play too. Um, I do like to read out mechanics and stuff to see how easily read it was. And yeah, it was pretty good. Um, <laughs> in chat, it says, honestly, I've seen plays of this game where the person wins and still dies, so it's definitely possible. Oh, for sure. I could have just maybe part of love for the cryptid means giving yourself to them as like a feast or, you know, just embracing the death that they bring because they're just that kind of creature um because mine uh entity that i made up here ogo as i said at the beginning of our session here uh based on ogo pogo which uh, is a local legend to my area um of a lake monster um sort of like uh almost our own version of um loch ness monster in terms of how it's described um, though I made Ogo much more like a snake. Um, it was like a mix between a couple creatures and oh, I can't wait to <laughs> throw that up on Twitter to show everybody. Um, so yeah, I always enjoy games with tarot because I love using tarot cards. Uh, and I can see lots of possibilities and how, yeah, as I said, how it can get pretty, pretty silly if you have a group of people playing this so I'd be interested in playing this with other friends to see what we could come up with um, but yeah so let me first see if it works in chat it seemed to hiccup and then happen uh, yeah so if you're watching live here in chat on twitch I did the command cryptid that brings up uh, okay cryptid uh, itch page where you can go buy the game or you can find it in the itch bundle um, as of today's recording I believe solo and not alone is still up uh, so you can get a bunch of games like okay cryptid um, as well as okay cryptid and yeah of course if you enjoy it make sure again support uh, the maker uh, tag I'm remembering I hope I did that correctly someone someone told me earlier. Okay, let me scroll back. Yes. 
tag. <laughs> um, so make sure you give them a uh, support uh, for the game. If you're interested, lots of fun stuff. You can check out like the little character uh, for so there's a character sheet for your cryptid as well as for your investigator. Um, and yeah, and uh, once again, today's tarot card, which I've used in the past here on my channel, um, Antique Anatomy Tarot by Claire Goodchild. I actually have the, um, this was a supporter, uh, like, uh, why? I'm blanking hardcore on words. It's been a long day for me. Apologies. Um, I have an early version of the deck, but you can get the deck now with like a nice book all bundled up. So check that out. She also has Oracle cards too. So if you're into Oracle cards, very similar kind of stuff. Memento Mori, uh, they are called. And yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say other than thank you so much for coming by. We had a fun little story here. Uh, this game, though we played it in an hour-ish, it can be anywhere... Um, I think written in the document actually it says like three hours or more depending on how many um, meeting threshold number you have or how many players you have. It can get longer. You could do multiple sessions. Um, so yeah. Ah. And if you enjoy my content, well, I do lots of things. I play, I usually play solo games on Wednesday nights. I am on a break from my usual campaign of Ironsworn. Uh, last game I played was Tangled Blessings. Um, so that, if it's not a VOD still on Twitch, you can find it on my YouTube along with this one when we get there. Um, it will be up there in a 24 hour ish, 24 hour ish on YouTube. And if you are seeing this on YouTube, well, everything you need to know is going to be in the description down below, the links and all that stuffs. Um, I think that's about it. So, wherever time zone you're in, day, night, evening, whatever it is, hope it's a good one. Remember to hydrate. I definitely did not do it enough. I think I had like a couple sips during the whole thing. So make sure you hydrate. Very important for your functions. Ogo loves water, which is why you should definitely do it. Do it for Ogo. Um, and yeah, I appreciate you coming in and watching. Uh, I hope uh, I hope I played well. <laughs> it's always hard when your brain is gone, but it fits. It fits Katrina. Katrina, I imagined being exhausted and scatterbrained, so it works for her. Um, and yeah, if you want to see the portraits on Twitter, make sure you follow me at Ghost Candle on Twitter. As much as it is being weird and mucky over there, I will post. Um, or if you find me on Instagram other stuff. I got lots of links. You can see in the links, ghostlylinks.card.co. Only a few socials I'm actually active at. Um, shit, where's my hat? Maybe a cryptid took my hat. Oh no. My hat's gone. <laughs> Not my Irish hat. Oh my. Okay. We're having a, we're, we're having a thing here. I will see you next time. Hopefully with a hat found. If not, I hope whatever cryptid took it enjoys it, I guess. Um, yeah. So farewell, my face and feet. See you next time. Bye-bye.